Hello. Hello, everyone. This is Kate Pfeiffer speaking to you from Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts. And this is my first Facebook Live presentation. And hopefully this is working and hopefully I am live. Uh, I'm here today, I'm a children's book author and I am speaking today about the book, Henry the Dog with No Tail. Henry the Dog with No Tail is based, was based on a real book. Oh, there are people, now I see how this works. Hello, oh, that's great. Hi, Amy, hi, Rebecca. So Henry the Dog with No Tail is based on the re real dog, Henry the Dog. And Henry the Dog and I used to spend a lot of time together because he, uh, was a dog and I work at home and he lived at home and uh, we would take long walks in the dog park and he would see all his dog buddies and they all had tails and I used to wonder if he wished he had a tail because their tails were always wagging away and he didn't have one. Henry was born without a tail. He was an Australian Shepherd and he's the type of dog um, that a breed of dog that is often born without a tail. And so I used to think, I wonder if he's thinking, boy, I wish I had a tail. Or if he was thinking, oh, I'm so glad I don't have a tail. I never have to worry about anyone stepping on my tail. So I decided to write a book about a dog named Henry who doesn't have a tail. Uh, so it was inspired by the real Henry, but the book is totally made up. Uh, the story's made up. And my father, who is a children's book author and illustrator himself, who's named Jules Pfeiffer, and here are a few of the books he's done, decided that he would illustrate the book. Here are some of my father's books. This book is called Meanwhile. And this book is called The Daddy Mountain. And so my father came over one day and he decided, that he wanted to start drawing Henry right there, right here, right now. So he asked for a pen and some paper and he, um, and he wanted to start drawing. And I'm going to show you some of the early drawings that he did of Henry the dog with no trail, tail. And you can see what you think of them because um, have, if you ever tried to draw a dog, it can be tricky. So this is the first drawing that my father did of Henry the dog with no tail. So does that look like the real Henry? Not quite. So did he say, oh no, I really can't do this. I can't draw a dog that looks like Henry. Or did he say, let me try again? Well, I think you can guess that he said, let me try again. And he asked for another piece of paper and did another drawing, his second drawing of Henry the dog with no tail. Hi, Mrs. Smith. My second grade teacher just signed on. That's so fun. And this is the second grade, the second drawing he did of Henry the dog with no tail. So it still doesn't quite look like Henry, but did he say, oh, I can't draw Henry, I give up? No, he said, give me another piece of paper and I'll try again. And so here is the third drawing he did of Henry the dog with no tail. So they're getting better and better as you can see, but they still aren't quite perfect. So did he say, you know what, I've tried three times, this really isn't working out, out, I give up? Or did he say, you know what, give me another piece of paper and let me try again? It's exactly what he did. And this is the fourth drawing he did of Henry the dog with no tail. And as you can see, his drawings 
are getting better and better and better and better. And he kept drawing and drawing and drawing until he got Henry to look like this Henry, who looks a lot like this Henry, who is here with my daughter. So now I'm going to read you the story of Henry, the dog with no tail. Excuse me, as we try to work out, as I said, this is my first Facebook live streaming. So they're trying to work this out, where to hold the book, how to do this. Henry wanted one thing in life. He wanted a tail. Henry was a dog with no tail, and this made him sad. All the other dogs he knew had tails. His best friend, Grady, a black Labrador, had a great big black tail that he swung like a baseball bat and chased like a cat. His friend Pip, a pug, could do tricks with her tail. She could twist it and curl it. Pip liked to put on shows for the other dogs. She'd ask the dogs in the audience to bark to 10. And before they were done, she had tied her tail in a bow. And then there was Larry. Larry, whose real name was Larissima, was a prize-winning poodle whose tail stuck straight up in the air and had a big puffy ball stuck to the end of it. You can see there's Larissima. Henry didn't care if he had a long or thin or curly or puffy tail. He didn't care what kind of tail he had. Henry moped around his house feeling sorry for himself. He moped and he moped. His owners saw how sad he was, so they told him he should go find a tail. Henry thought this was a fine idea and left home in search of a tail. And naturally, when a dog goes in search of a tail, he goes to the tailors. Hello, said Henry. Hello, said the tailor. I'm here for a tail, said Henry. As you can see, I do not have one. Perhaps you have an extra. I don't have tails here. But I could try to make you one, replied the tailor. The tailor worked all day and all night and made a tail for Henry. The tailor buttoned it on. There we go. And Henry went on his way. Henry went, wanted to show off his tail, so he went to the park. Look, Henry said. I've got a new tail. Wow, neat, cool, said Grady. Does it do any tricks, asked Pip. Henry ran around in a circle and jumped over his tail. The first time he did a high jump, then he did a long jump, then he ran backward and jumped. He did a spin jump and a low jump and a leap jump and then he tripped. Poor Henry. Guess what? Dogs don't trip over real tails, said Larissima. I think your tricks are neat, said Grady. Sometimes tricks take practice, added Pip. 
It doesn't look like a real tail to me, said Larry. If that's a real tail, then wag it. I, Henry tried to wag his tail, but it wouldn't wag. I told you that wasn't a real tail, scoffed Larry. It's a fake. Henry left the park feeling miserable. His new tail was too long, and worst of all, it didn't wag. What good was a tail that didn't wag? So Henry went off to the wagon maker and asked, can you make my tail wag? But the wagon maker said, I don't make things mad wag. I make wagons. Henry bought a wagon from the wagon maker. He filled his wagon with food and water and left town, vowing not to return until his new tail wagged. He traveled for three days and three nights. He climbed mountains and walked around lakes. On the fourth day, he ended up in New York City's Battery Park. It was full of batteries. Henry decided to put one on his tail and his tail started to wag. Henry packed up his wagon and headed home. His tail started wagging so fast it was hard to walk, so he ran. Then his tail started running, wagging so fast it was hard to run, so he sat down and his tail pushed him the rest of the way. Look, said Henry, my tail wags. Wow, neat, cool, said Grady. Hoof, scoffed Larry. You can be in my show, said an excited Pip. Which was good because Henry's tail was wagging so fast it lifted him off the ground and threw him along like a Frisbee. Since not many dogs have tails that can toss them across the field, Pip was sure the show would be a great success. She called together all the dogs. After finishing her act, Pip denounced her new partner, introducing Henry the dog with the super tail. It's like any tail, anywhere, at any time, in any place. Please put your paws together for Henry. The dogs put paw to paw and barked a round of a pause. At this point, Henry was supposed to fly onto the stage, but he didn't. Instead, he shouted, I'm up here. All the dogs looked up. Henry was in the air, flying like a helicopter. Grady and all the other dogs thought this was a pretty cool trick and shouted, higher, higher, higher. But Henry didn't want to go higher. He wanted to go lower. He wanted to be on the ground chasing balls, not up in the air dodging birds. Henry was scared. He grabbed onto a branch at the very top of the tree and held on as tight as he could. Higher, 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 chanted the dogs down below. All the dogs, that is, but one. Take the battery off of your tail, yelled Larry. Even though it was Larry's idea, Henry knew it was a good idea. He took the battery off of his tail and it stopped wagging. Then he took off his tail and hung it from a branch on the tree. Henry, the dog with no tail, carefully climbed down the tree. Here we go. Wow, 
neat, cool, said Grady. What a show, exclaimed Pip. You know, I guess you're not so bad without a tail, conceded Larry. Henry agreed. I think my days of having a tail are behind me, he said. To this day, Henry's tail remains on the tree, flapping like a flag in the wind. And to this day, Henry the dog with no tail is very happy that he's a dog with no tail and a tail to tell. The end. So that is the story of Henry the dog with no tail, as told from here in Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts. And um, I was wondering if anyone has any questions. I can see uh, people on the live feed. So please uh, text me if you have any questions about, um, or write them in if you have any questions about Henry, if your kids have any, want to ask me any questions about Henry the dog with no tail or the other books, like Double Pink, which was inspired by my daughter, Maddie, who loves the color pink, particularly loved the color pink when she was a little girl. Hi, Griffin. Um, and my mom is trying to ruin my life also inspired by my daughter, Maddie. And No Go Sleep, also inspired by my daughter, Maddie. This book, Which Puppy, was not inspired by my daughter, Maddie. And this book was inspired when President Obama was just nominated to be president and in his acceptance speech, he told the world that when he was going to move into the White House, his two daughters, Sasha and Malia, would be getting a puppy to move into the White House with them. And this book was inspired by that because it was about who was going to get to be the, witch, the first puppy, the little puppy that got to live in the White House. And how do you pick who got to pick which puppy that would be. So any questions? See lots of highs. Hi, Josh. Wow. Um, but let me know if you have any questions. Was Larry inspired by a real dog? So yes, Larry was inspired by a real dog. Um, all the dogs in Henry the dog with no tail were inspired by real dogs. So there was Grady who was a black Labrador and truly Henry's was a puppy with Henry and truly uh, Henry's best friend. They just ran and romped and had a great time together. They just loved each other. Uh, Pip was inspired by a pug who was my daughter's, the dog that belonged to my daughter's babysitter at the time. And Larry was inspired by a dog also at the dog park who um, tried to bite Henry once. And so I wasn't a big fan of Pip, even though Pip was quite beautiful. Pip had a little bit of an attitude. And so that was who Pip was inspired by. Thank you, that was a great question. Any other questions? Hi, Sam and Pete. Do you guys have any questions you wanna ask? So, for those of you who might want to try drawing your own and creating your own table uh, tale for Henry, um, I'm going to post this after that you can download. And it's also on my website. But this is a picture um, of Henry without a tail. And I encourage you to design any weird, wacky, and wonderful tale that you can think of. And I'll put this on my Facebook page. And it's also on katepfeiffer.com uh, for you to download. And here are a few questions. Um, also have read Bark George, Bark to, um, to my grandkids. Bark George was a book that my father wrote and it's very, very funny. Um, do you visit schools and do author reads? Yes, I do when schools are back, love to do that. Um, and here's a question from Allison and Remy. Why does Henry put a battery on his tail and do they really have batteries in Battery Park? 
So Henry puts a battery on his tail because he hopes and thinks the battery will get his tail to wag. And sure enough, it does. So do they really have batteries in Battery Park? Well, Battery Park is beautiful right now. It's stunningly beautiful, but it is not filled with batteries. That was my own little pun. So Henry the Dog with No Tail is a book filled with silly puns, uh, which I had fun writing. For instance, when the dog barked, the dogs barked a round of applause. Let's see. Instead of applause, the dogs during Pip's show bark a round of applause. Here we go. Can you all bark a round of applause right now? Funny not to be able to hear you on the other side. And Frankie has asked, what are some of the fun tales other kids have drawn? And unfortunately, I don't have those with me right now, but I have some on my website and I can put them on Facebook also. But the kids have gotten quite creative in designing um, tales for Henry and I hope you will too. And if you wanna send me your tales, we'd love to see them. So woof, woof back to you, Laura. And bark, bark back to you, Frankie. Any other questions? How's everyone doing in social isolation? Is everyone drawing? I highly recommend drawing. Okay, so tomorrow through the Egertown Library at 1045, Maddie and I are going to be reading and talking about my first book, which was the book that um, she inspired called Double Pink. And this book um, was inspired by her because she, when she was little, I refused to dress her in pink. She had nothing pink, but then she discovered on her own the color pink and fell madly in love with it and would only wear pink, only like to draw on pink, love the color pink. And I started to worry about whether she liked the color pink too much and what would happen if you liked the color pink too much. And so tomorrow at 1045, we'll be doing a live stream through the Egertown Public Library um, Facebook page. So, all right, so I'm gonna stay on for another two minutes or so, or unless we get more questions. And, oops, oh dear, did I just go away? So am I still feeding? Um, yes, live feed tomorrow, Mrs. Smith, um, 10.45, and I will, I will put the link on my Facebook page. I'm not still feeding. Oops. Oh, I am still feeding. Okay. Sorry about this. This is, as I said, the first time I'm doing this and not quite sure how it's working. So any other questions before I sign off? Thank you, Lenny. Hope you guys are doing well. All right, I think that's it for today. Hope to see you tomorrow through the Egertown Library and we'll be doing more of these uh, as we continue our social isolations and um, um, be well. Bye-bye. <laughs>